At this very moment, I say we sit tight and assess. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things don't look up, got right and wrong. And we're supposed to trust you. The comet's got your name. I don't, I don't see the relevancy. For this list, we're looking at what the satirical sci-fi flick got right and wrong about climate change, as the Netflix film has drawn a lot of attention for its references to real life. Big spoiler alert for those who haven't finished it yet. What did you think of the controversial movie? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. The science is clear. Right. In the beginning of Don't Look Up, we get to see a small group of scientists discover a comet and its course through space. I've been running it all day. I keep getting the same result. A direct hit of Earth in six months and 14 days. Naturally, they check their information with a few other professionals to make sure they didn't make any errors. So there is no doubt about the existence of the comet in the science community. Matthew, what are your calculations? Uh, first calc program is saying in six months, 14 days. We got six months and 14 days. In real life, scientists have been researching climate change since as early as the 1950s. Scientists from all over the world have collected, compared, and shared data. And there is no doubt about their conclusion. The climate is changing. So how certain is this? There's 100% certainty of impact. Please, don't say 100%. Can we just call it a potentially significant event? Yeah. Yes. But it isn't potentially going to happen. In both the film and in reality, there is clear scientific proof that something is threatening the general public's well-being. Number nine, only scientists understand the problem. Wrong. From the get-go, no one in the Don't Look Up universe seems to care about the comet as much as PhD candidate Kate DiBiaschi. The decision you're making is to sit tight and assess I'm sorry, who is she? More than that, the other characters seem to refuse to grasp the gravity of the problem. They seem to not believe there was even a problem, which couldn't be farther from reality, both in the film and in our world. The peer review process is absolutely well, listen, essential if, if for all of us to get stock, to the, the facts of yes. Well, if Bash's stock is any indicator, then we don't have to worry about the peer review. It is going gangbusters. However, in our world, the crisis isn't an approaching comet, but rather climate change. And it is something that even non-scientists can understand. In fact, people of all ages and from all backgrounds are getting involved in the fight to slow down climate change. And with the internet making information more accessible than ever, people that care about climate change are staying informed and learning more about what they can do to help. I think that already we are seeing devastating effects of inaction and of waiting. And if we continue to wait, that will only get worse. These damages will be irreversible. Number eight, conspiracy theories ran rampant. Right, the media moves fast, but the internet moves a lot faster. After the scientists started their media tour to spread the news about the comet, opinions poured in. This guy doesn't even know what a, what a heliocentric orbit is and he's calling me a crackpot. <laughs> he, he says that Jewish billionaires invented this comet threat so the government can confiscate our liberty and our guns. Hashtag don't be scared. Not many people were quick to believe them, but quite a few were quick to come up with pretty wild theories about the duo and the comet. So here, instead of life imitating art, we have art imitating life. Climate change denial is a conspiracy theory. It is a belief that the world scientific community is lying to you and a group right. of fossil fuel executives with little scientific training are telling you the truth. Because when it comes to climate change and any other divisive issue really, there has been no shortage of conspiracy theories blatantly contradicting science and diluting the seriousness of the problems at hand. So Obama's talking about all of this with the global warming and that and a lot of it's a hoax. Number seven, logical solutions are ignored in favor of new technologies, right? If a comet were flying straight at Earth, most people would likely think that shooting a rocket at it to knock it off its course might be a sensible solution. Using decommissioned space shuttles and satellites loaded with nuclear explosives, we will blow Comet Dibiaski off her course. Most people, except for maybe billionaires who already have more money than they could ever spend. 
Instead, they might want the comet to hit Earth in order to profit off its precious metals. I'm sorry, I, is, that, is that why you no. aborted this entire mission? Is because you, you're trying to mine the comet Dr. for Mindy, rare I minerals? Though that exact scenario is nowhere close to the truth, the most logical climate actions do often get put on the back burner. Instead of transitioning away from fossil fuels and working to create less carbon emissions, some big companies are siding in favor of unreliable technologies focusing on carbon dioxide removal. Partnering with an oil company is absolutely a step in the wrong direction. You're not stopping the fossil fuel industry, you're actually promoting it. Well, at least the tech is a step in the right direction. Number six, all we need is technology to fix the problem. Wrong. In both our reality and the movie, we're faced with a pretty big threat. And in both cases, we actually already have the technology to lessen the threat. God, I'm so relieved that you guys are, are doing something. I, this has been really, really, really hard. This has been really, really, really stressful. It's been a lot. But having the technology and using the technology are two very different things. In Don't Look Up, the plan to shoot the comet off course was bulldozed by an Elon Musk-like tech billionaire. We've been developing phase fission reactions in the CERN particle accelerator that can splinter the comet into smaller pieces with breathtaking accuracy. Here and now, we have all sorts of technological resources to combat climate change like using renewable fuels and scaling up carbon dioxide removal tech. Director Adam McKay said it best, quote, We have the science to solve the climate crisis. We are missing awareness, will, and action, especially from the people that have the power to take it. Number five, the next gold rush will be critical elements and minerals. Right. It's no secret that the creators of this movie drew heavily from reality. In fact, there was a lot more that it got right than it got wrong. We had our scientists who went to uh, the prestigious schools of Harvard, Princeton, etc. They confirmed the data. Though we don't have a planet-destroying comet made of expensive elements hurtling straight towards us, we hope, we do have naturally occurring elements and minerals right here on Earth. We're running short. Uh, and the problem is exacerbated, of course, because China has her big panda paw firmly on, on almost all the mines that produce these valuable rare earth acids. And some scientists believe they will be the next gold rush. These chemical elements are used in electronics, batteries, and clean energy hardware. Maybe the demand for minerals is getting us a step closer to a cleaner planet. There's going to be a need for many more rare earths and on a much more secure basis. We only hope the mining is done in a nature-friendly way. Number four, the media dismisses the issue. Right. When Dr. Mindy and Kate realize the president isn't going to help with the comet, they wrongly believe that the media would be able to help. Wait, so you're saying we're just going to leak it to the press? Isn't that illegal? Hell yeah, we're going to leak it. In case you didn't notice, the White House just blew us off. Unfortunately, once on air, the news anchors refuse to take the scientists seriously, and Kate ends up as a meme. Sadly, that depiction isn't too far from reality. Climate change is covered minimally if it's covered at all. People who get their news solely from TV are only getting part of the whole picture. We're hearing that there is no comet, some or that there is a comet, right. that it's a good thing, or maybe it's a bad thing. We are so confused. One news host even tweeted that climate change is a, quote, ratings killer. So they have no incentive to cover it. Media outlets often care more about making a profit than spreading meaningful information. We did not feature or push on any sites, and clicks overall were below basic weather and traffic stories. <sighs> so that, that, that's it. But just like in the movie, there are social media users who try to step up and spread what knowledge they can. Number three, the climate crisis is just one problem. Wrong. There is one big problem throughout the movie, the comet. Is anyone else seeing this? That's it. That's it, that's the, that's the comet, look, it's right there. That in itself causes a bunch of other problems, but the comet is the only real threat to the people of Earth. And it makes sense, as the movie would probably be pretty boring if they were just finding new threats the whole time. We're trying to tell you this whole time, it's right there. It's, it's right there, Kate. 
but in reality, climate change is not just one single problem that has a clear and simple solution. Climate change is more of a blanket term for a vast array of problems that have varying solutions. Guys, the truth is way more depressing. Action to combat these threats would require people addressing a lot of big issues around the world, not just one, which is why it's also been called a crisis and an emergency, among other things. Number two, politicians don't do their part. Right. Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence's characters in the movie are pretty rational people. When they discovered an Earth-ending threat, their first reaction was to reach out to the people that should be able to help, the government. Are we really about to tell the President of the United States that we have just over six months until humankind, basically every species, is completely extinct? That's exactly what we're about to do, yeah. Yet they were met with side eyes of disbelief and outright disrespect. Like in the movie, many real-life politicians scoff at the idea of climate change rather than looking into the facts and trying to take action. You cannot go around saying to people that there's a 100% chance that they're going to die. You know, it's just nuts. Many efforts to lower carbon emissions and switch to renewable resources have been thwarted by the same people that are supposed to be leaders of said efforts. And do you know why they want you to look up? Do you know why? Because they want you to be afraid. But not all hope is lost, since there are some politicians out there fighting the good fight for the environment. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, it's too late to do something. Wrong. Big spoiler alert here. The movie does not have the happy ending you would expect. Nope. Instead, the fears of the scientists are realized. The comet actually hits, and most of the population ends up dying. The movie is definitely a commentary on our current situation, but is not necessarily a prediction. Though what's going on in our world shares parallels with a lot of the negative parts of the film, unlike the characters in Don't Look Up, we still have a chance to change our future. How do we fix it? We should have deflected this comment when we had the chance, but we didn't do it. I, mean, I don't know why we didn't do it. Climate change is something that's been happening over the last several decades. It may be too late to reverse the changes already made, but it is not too late to take action and stop further and more permanent damage. It's also important to think of this as a problem with many complementary solutions. And so I think uh, what one big message of the report was Every little bit counts. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.